Michael Kwan here with Mega Tech News. You've got a lot of options when it comes to the world of Android tablets, and one of the newest ones is the Sony Xperia Z2. The Xperia Z2 tablet is a 10.1 inch uh, display with 1920 by 1200. You'll notice that it has kind of wide bezels all the way around, which I guess it's fine for a 10 inch because presumably you'll be holding it. One of the first things that struck me about it is just how thin and light it is. It's also waterproof or water re resistant and dust resistant uh, with IPX5 and IPX8 ratings. Uh, what that means is that you can dunk it in about a meter and a half of water for about 30 minutes. In order to achieve that waterproofness, the ports here for charging and for the uh, micro SD card slot are covered. So you need to open those up to be able to access the ports. If you want to take it with you in the pool to surf the web or whatever, that's great. It's very similar to the rest of the Xperia line of smartphones. So the power button, and the volume rocker are very similar to what you find on the smartphones with the round power button there. Uh, around the top, uh, next to the covered ports, is an IR blaster, so you can use this as a TV remote. It comes with all the usual Sony jazz, so it has the triluminous display and X reality for mobile and all these other catchphrases that Sony likes to use. So, all that really means is that it is a really nice display. It's not oversaturated like how you might find with AMOLED displays with Samsung. If you're coming from uh, screens like that, you might find that the colors are a little bit more muted, but Sony is going for more of a realistic look. Uh, one issue that I did find with its thin and light design is that it does flex quite a bit. So you can kind of see, I'm not giving it too much pressure, but you can see that it is contorting quite a bit there. And I guess that's fine if you have the, the tablet in your bag. So if it's jostling around, it's probably going to be able to survive a little bit of abuse with or without a case. But in the long run, I have, would have concerns about build quality and longevity. Uh, you also notice that if I'm pushing on the bezel here, uh, the display kind of warps out, which is, again, something that concerns me about the build quality, especially on a $500 tablet. You would hope that it, it holds up a lot better than that. But maybe that's the trade-off that you get for having a tablet that is this thin and this light. It ships with Android 4.4.2 KitKat. And like the Sony smartphones, it is thinly veiled for the most part. So some of the apps have been replaced. So for example, uh, Walkman is your primary music player. Um, the standard gallery in Android has been replaced by what they call album. Uh, and you also get movies and uh, play memories and uh, the PlayStation Store and things like that. Uh, one thing that I really liked about this tablet and it's in line with all the other Sony tablets is something called mini apps. So for example, if I'm already browsing the web and I need to do a quick calculation, I can bring up the calculator and I can float that around wherever I want on the display. And it's not just one mini app, you can bring up as many as you want really. So for example, there is a, there's a TV remote and if I move the TV remote over, you'll see that my calculator is still there. And uh, speaking of using a browser, I can bring up a browser. So I can have the browser, the TV remote and the calculator and whatever app happens to be running all behind that all at the same time, which is great for multitasking uh, because you're not forced to split your screen in half or anything like that. One other feature that I did like is when you're opening up the app drawer, if you slide in from the left, there are different ways for you to organize the apps. So uh, you, if you switch it to own order, what it means is you know you can move the apps around so that they're organized the way that you like. But you can also have it sorted by alphabetical, the way most used, the order in which they were installed. One feature that you'll also find in the software, if I turn the screen off here, uh, you may have remembered this called knock-on from the LG smartphones and Sony has implemented a similar kind of idea here is when the screen is off or your, your tablet is kind of in the standby mode, you don't necessarily have, have to hit the power button to be able to wake it back up. If you just kind of double tap on the screen, it wakes back up and you can slide to unlock it. So you don't need to hit the power button to be able to get to that and I think that's pretty neat. There is an 8 megapixel on the camera on the back, which I'll show you here which is fine, except there is no flash. Again, it's a tablet, so maybe not such a big deal, but to have a camera without a flash these days is not ideal. There is also the two megapixel camera on the front, 
for selfies if you prefer. And it ships with a series of different camera modes. So you're probably gonna be leaving yourself in superior auto most of the time. That's the auto mode, it'll adjust for exposure and all that kind of stuff. But there is a manual mode, so you can adjust different settings like your exposure and uh, shutter speed and white balance and so on. One of the neater features is something called time sh shift burst. And what time shift burst does is while you're in this mode, it's effectively shooting a video almost the whole time. So when you hit the shutter button, it seems like it only took one picture, but really what it did is it took a whole series of pictures in a sense, uh, because you're basically going backwards about a half a second to a second and forwards in time about the same amount of time uh, from when you push the shutter button. So what this means is if you're at a sporting event and something great just happened, you happen to push the shutter button just a little bit too late, normally you'd miss that shot. But if you in time share burst, you can pick the shot out of that sequence that was the one that you really wanted to have. You can just click on check mark to choose it. And for fun, they've also put in something called AR effect. Uh, and uh, basically what that is, is, is augmented reality into the camera itself. So there's, there's a fairy tale mode and a dinosaur mode and masquerade mode. And when you hit it, you kind of move it around. It, you need to find a flat surface for it to work on. And it brings up you know, this extra scene that lays on top of what the camera is actually seeing. In terms of raw performance, we ran it through the Antutu benchmark, which is a pretty standard to get a sense of the performance. And with a score in the 34,000 range, it's right in line with the level of performance that we, get, that we got out of the Samsung Galaxy S5. So when you're at this kind of flagship tier for smartphones and tablets, performance is generally not an issue. You got a quad core Snapdragon processor in here with three gigabytes of RAM. It's a solid performer uh, in that regard. That is a quick look at the Sony Xperia Z2 tablet, the 10.1 inch tablet. I really like how thin and light it is, but I do have some concerns about how much flex there is. Uh, the OS runs great, all the mini apps I really like. I would have preferred if there was a, a flash for the camera and the thing, it is a fingerprint magnet kind of throughout. You can kind of see on the back of the case here, I haven't been using it all that much, but there's already so many fingerprints on here. But in terms of anything that you'd want out of an Android tablet, this is a solid performer and you can find it at a retailer near you in about the 499 range. So uh, again, I am Michael Kwan from Mega Tech News. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you in our next video.